I have an addiction, a social media addiction. And whatever it is that is taking your time, that you feel is um, taking out a huge chunk of your life in a way that is stopping you from doing other things that would add more meaning to your life. You can actually put steps to limit that thing and with time possibly eliminate it entirely. Time is one of the things we can't always account for, even though we agree it is one of the most important things in life. If you work in 9 to 5 and I ask you how your time is spent in that period, you can account for it. But how many people would be able to account for the remaining 16 hours minus their sleep time? There won't be a lot of people. I mean, some people can do that, but some people wouldn't be able to come up with a tangible answer. Let me give you a very personal example. I term myself as a very disciplined person, at least in most areas of my life. I say most because I have an addiction, a social media addiction, and I would chalk it up to indiscipline in that area. As part of this story is my little brother. He says he's practicing stoicism, and that means stoicism and digital minimalism, actually. That means that he comes online rarely ever. We can always reach him on the phone. But when he does come online, he has a lot to say. Like, there's quality in the time that he comes online. He makes sure he's coming online. is not just for what I would call frivolities. So, on one of his online coming days, he posts on his status about his um, journey with digital minimalism and stoicism. Then, that is how I discovered digital minimalism. Actually, I had never thought of the concept. It had never crossed my mind before then. And as someone who had this addiction, social media addiction, I had to get more because it was something that had um, stayed taking up a lot of my time and I was feeling guilty about it even though I had taken steps that um, hadn't borne fruit at that point. So this was somebody that I knew that was living the life that I wanted to incorporate into mine. So I slid into his DM before I lost him again to the abyss of the online, to the abyss of the offline world. I wanted more tips and he gave me his personal tips which I will share with you later at the end of this video as well as books uh, in classic stoic character. I haven't actually met another stoic person but I'm assuming they have that books for anything that they talk about so you can have a more in-depth knowledge. So my brother, he tells me his tips and one of them entails going through um, the history of my app usage on my phone. You know how if you're broke and you're trying to minimize debts and just build up your financial life, the first step you take is to check your financial statements to see what has been eating up your money, like the bulk of your budget. That I applied the same wisdom here. I went into my digital well-being app on my phone, the dashboard, and <sighs> the things I saw, the horror. It turns out that I was spending on average at the time. Mind you, I wasn't a content creator at that time. I was just using these apps on my phone like normal people. Even though I was learning online a lot at the time, or well, on average, I was spending eight hours in a day on my phone the horror like i couldn't believe it because it was unbelievable because i i'm a twin mom and i always complain about being stressed and overworked where did i find the time i just could not it was off at me at the time but yeah it was what it was because like this realization made me know that I actually have a lot of time on my hands. If some of it, because 
more than half of that time, that eight hours, in as much as I was studying online, more than half of that eight hours was spent on social media apps, aimlessly scrolling with no intention, just for scrolling sake. So if I had put in some of that time to rest, maybe I wouldn't have been overstressed or overtired. After doing my assessments and knowing where I was falling short, I had to put some steps in place to limit my time. Using some of his tips, I had to put those steps in place. I started off with the most abused apps, which were my social media apps. IG, Pinterest, YouTube, not so much. I wasn't a TikTok at the time. I didn't even have a TikTok account. But IG, Pinterest, a little bit of Facebook. You'll be surprised at the little bit of time here, a little bit of time there that compounds to take up your time. Twitter too. So I knew if I started with just being stringent and um, allocating very little time to these apps, I would relapse quickly. What I did was to allocate four hours, cut it in half from eight hours to four hours, and shared it within these apps with the intention of reducing it as time goes by. What that did for me was that for each time I spent on the apps, and by the way, you can actually you can actually limit the time you spend on the apps themselves without using the digital well-being app on your phone. You can all the apps I've used, except Twitter. I've never tried Twitter, but on Instagram, on YouTube, you can limit the time that you use on these apps. Like once the time is up, maybe you allocate 30 minutes or one hour a day. Once the time is up, you get a notification that the time is up. So what that does is that it lets you know that oh, the time you have here is very limited. You have to use it judiciously. You won't continue just aimlessly scrolling. You would um, be more mindful of how you spend your time on each of these apps. So, um, onto the book, the Digital Minimalism book, which is a book that I wish I had read earlier. Maybe it would have helped me to start curtailing my time on apps um, earlier than I have. I am doing now. The book is by Carl Newport and essentially what the concept of digital minimalism is all about is um, helping you to minimize the time that you waste on the apps on your phone, not just social media apps, but um, and, they, and be able to maximize the output you get from these um, apps, whether apps or just your phone, your laptop, your tablet, whatever you choose that is a digital device because as the book posits, these um, tools are meant to improve our productivity. So when they start dictating how we spend our time, how we live our life, then it becomes counterproductive. So you're supposed to maximize what you get out of these devices and minimize the time you spend on there. Although there are some concepts in the book that are quite extremist, that I find quite extreme, considering that I work in social media now, like social media is my workplace, but it's been very helpful in my journey so far. My major reason for focusing on social media, aside from it being my workplace, is that I have a personal, um, there's a personal twist to it, which is my addiction. I don't know what your own addiction or the things that take your own time are, Whatever it is that is taking your time, that you feel is um, taking out a huge chunk of your life aimlessly, like taking your time in a way that is stopping you from doing other things that would add more meaning to your life. You can actually put steps to limit that thing and with time possibly eliminate it entirely if it's not adding to your life. So, uh, my aim for making this video is that when, by the time you finish watching this video, you would be able to reclaim back your time and essentially your life so you can live a more fulfilling life. You would think that putting all these steps in place would make me someone that is now totally in control of my time and my life. 
but that is wrong that is not what happened actually when i started creating content beauty and lifestyle content on instagram and tiktok i had to increase my time the time i spent on these apps because um I, was, I had to research content i had never done video content for this area of social media like i'd never done video content in that area except in tech so i had to research what other people were doing to kind of set the tempo for my own content and before you know it i was back to ground zero i was doing what i used to do before which was just doom scrolling on social media so one of those days which um i think it's a good thing that when you're doing this thing when you're doom scrolling um, when you catch yourself you actually feel guilty because if you don't feel guilty there's a problem so one of those days i'm doom scrolling and i, I just catch myself and i'm like wow so we're back to wasting time and just it's not this time it wasn't about research it was just consuming people's um content without any purpose which was just not going to help me overall in life so when i knew i backslided and fallen way far from the goal i went back to my brother my stoic brother who at this time had become my mentor in this journey um Thankfully, I still had the books he shared. I hadn't started reading the books that time. I just took his tips and ran with it, which I feel was part of why I failed initially because I hadn't built a foundation, a kind of guiding principles on the um, concept of digital minimalism. I just took the tips and ran with it. So I failed. I went back to him. He just kind of told me what the books were about and I should read it on my own and just like kind of assimilate the idea for myself so that I'll be more grounded in the principles. And so far, so good. I have my, I have my, um, I won't say cheat this, but that sometimes when I'm not doing so well, but um, picking yourself up when you fall is more important than not falling at all in this journey. So, yeah, it's more about what I'm doing on the apps now rather than not being on the, on the apps at all. One of the advice or tips I would give here is for you not to quit, quit cold talking. Don't just stop without cutting back little by little because that is a sure recipe of just going back to the way you were or was. Because just like any addiction, this thing is an addiction actually. You have to acknowledge that it's an addiction so you'll be able to treat it properly. I'll link not just the book but some of the other books that I've been reading to help me be more steadfast. Including Atomic um, Habits and Daily Stoic. Do not quit cold turkey. Take it step by step and then just kind of like start cutting back. And you actually find that when you start cutting back, like you have more time, that 30 minutes that would have been spent on TikTok, um, just watching dance videos that would not add anything to your life, you can now use it to take a nap. If it is to earn more money, which for me was the reason why I, I wanted to cut down on my time so that I would have more time to actually ideate instead of just consistently researching other people's topics without actually doing anything or creating any content so you have to have the reason your reason has to be enough to get you to stop and when you stop and you've reclaimed your time you have to consistently work on using that time for something else for something else if it's for sleep so that you can sleep more because if you're somebody that works and it's when you get back home that you're scrolling instead of resting so that you'll be refreshed for the next day and it's just to reclaim your sleep time you should have that goal at the back of your mind and just envision you living the life that you want because in the first week in the first week or the first few weeks of trying this you're going to keep doing well because you still have that fresh motivation to do this thing. But as time goes on, when you start losing sight of your goals, you eventually want to go back. 
So I hope that whatever reason that you have, you'll be able to remind yourself when you start backsliding or you catch yourself not doing so well that the goal is worth it. So in my case, I wrote down my goal and my goal was to start making more money. So when I find myself doom scrolling, I ask myself, oh, so now am I, do I have enough money that I can afford to keep doom scrolling? or not take the courses that I plan to take to get better at content creation? Am I so good now that I feel I should be wasting this time on this thing? So I actually wrote down my goals and the steps I plan on taking to make sure that they come to fruition. And one of the things I had to do was actually write stuff down. I got notebooks and that was when I discovered that I can barely hold a pen for long i can barely like i could before just a few years ago i was literally a note copying machine and now i can barely hold my pen for more than five minutes my hand will literally start pinning me wow i feel this is because most of the things i do now i just type on my phone or use a voice recorder and my phone does it for me like it seems so little the skill of being able to hold a pen and that is something i'm working on now just unfathomable the things that happen to you when you're just not looking this thing they sneak up on you so yeah i'm working on holding my pen and writing more journaling more just essentially doing more yes i'm not going to take away from the fact that typing on my phone or on my laptop is kind of better because i get suggestions but like the pen one there's just this feel to it so yeah i didn't want to lose that as well so I'm writing more now, which is what something I think everybody should do, like write stuff down with your hands, not just your phone. But if it's only phone that you can do now, it's fine. Like just doing something is better than doing nothing at all. So yeah, there's a fun part. And that's it on my own personal tips, aside from reading the book and the stuff I've done. I hope that... By the time you start taking some of these steps or all of these steps you're going to be able to reclaim your time and um, just generally do the things that you've planned to do for so long so that you can live the life that you've always dreamt about so um this video will not be complete without another shout out to my brother who has been quite helpful in getting me to this point in just my digital minimalism journey some of his tips were to remove notifications because they're very distracting they're kind of compulsive they compel you to just look at your phone look at this person's message right now look at what is happening right now so you, you see those distracting apps that you cannot stop yourself from going to look at remove notifications from them out of sight is out of mind aside from that there is also the part of um, using browsers use browsers instead of apps on your phone kind of makes it a bit um will i say herculean makes it a bit more difficult and kind of lessens the time that you spend on these apps so use browsers instead of apps on your phone if it's a phone that you use or a laptop so it will kind of help you to minimize the time you spend on this or your socials aside from that um have you ever gone to check the amount of time you spend on WhatsApp, if you use WhatsApp or any um, social texting kind of app? You'll be surprised at the amount of time you spend there. So instead of texting and waiting for the other person to reply and just kind of wasting time, you'll find that calling on the phone actually saves a lot of time and it's a two in one stone because you build a deeper connection with whoever you're calling when you're saying things with your voice than when you're typing so you save time and your connection is stronger unless of course you for documentation for documentation purposes you have to write in text aside from those cases calling is better than texting and that's a wrap for this 
topic. Thank you for watching till this part, which is the end. And I hope to see you in my next video. Next week. Bye. So I actually promised a mini review on the hair teas, rosemary and clove water, which I've been using for the past two weeks. I used the Uwada hair twists and after removing my twist last week, unfortunately, I didn't get to the four weeks I was going for. But this is the hair I lost after taking out the three weeks old twists, and this is the hair I used to lose for two weeks after washing my hair two weeks. This is smaller actually, but um, it was still in the early days, so let's not judge it harshly. After using for maybe a month or three months, I would actually know if I've, there's been any much difference or if it has been helping or not because my hair is still shedding. Like, literally, just run my hands through my hair and have hair just like that. So, yeah, um, this is 14 to 15 weeks post relaxed, and I'm actually contemplating extending this wash day by another hairstyle, which is extremely risky <sighs> you'll find out what i decide on in my next video so hope to see you